So if your iris plants used to have lots of beautiful blooms like you're seeing here, but all of a sudden last spring you had mostly leaves and next to no flowers, on a closer inspection you're seeing that the roots are looking like this, it's time to divide them. In today's video, we are going to take a look at how to divide your iris plants so you can get lots of blooms in the spring and some common mistakes to avoid. And if this is your first time here, my name is Marlene. Welcome to Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. So let's start with a little, little bit of a background on these wonderful plants called iris. They are spring blooming perennials, meaning that they come back every year and they come in many different colors. You can see I have lavender here, and I have some bicolored ones. I also have this wonderful white one here as well. And the top petals are actually called standards. The lower ones are called falls. And you can see the beard right there, the little orange section, the little fuzz. That's why they're called bearded iris. They actually grow in growing zones three to nine for the most part. They're hardy in that area and they have the storage roots that are called rhizomes or it's really a modified stems. The true roots really are the smaller ones that you are seeing there. They actually grow anywhere from 12 to 40 inches so they're pretty large you know flowers that you will see at springtime absolutely gorgeous and they grow anywhere from one and a half to two feet tall. You can see how gorgeous these are and those beautiful gray green leaves I absolutely love to see them. So we're gonna take a look at some common mistakes to avoid when you're gonna divide them, and you'll see me step-by-step step dividing them in different ways. So first, let's take a look at the time of year. The time to divide them is typically mid to late summer or early fall, when you can see the leaves have gone back looking like how they are here now. And it's really good to know what growing zones you are in, because again, they grow from growing zones three to nine, and you need to know when it's gonna be time before the first frost, because typically you want that to be anywhere from four or, four or more weeks before the first frost comes in. Now, a bad time to do them is right after they um, have not bloomed for you, or they have just finished blooming, because you have to allow them to build up some food resources in those storage roots. Winter time is not a good time either because the ground is very cold, sometimes frozen over, and it will definitely damage the rhizomes. And those rhizomes are typically like a ginger root, so you can see they're fleshy, and they really will break down under that colder weather. Another time to avoid is right after they have bloomed and you have, you know, like trim back the flowers. Again, you have to give them time to build up that energy from photosynthesis in the leaves, and then you allow them to, you know, get more mature. And there are many reasons why I did list six in this video that I did in the past. You'll see it listed on the end of this. I'd love for you to go ahead and check that out because there are different factors that will help you to have your iris plants to bloom. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll need. So here you see I have a spade and this is typically used, you know, if you have them really bunching in and tightly clustered, you really need this to go in and dig. If they're not as tightly clustered in there, you can get away with just using a trowel alone, but you'll still need it even if you're using a spade because of the shape and everything, it goes into those little spots that we need it to get to. It's good to also have a small, sharp knife with you as well in case you may need to cut some of the rhizomes there. And of course, you will need to have your little pruners like I have here because we're gonna go in and we're gonna cut out some of the leaves and you'll see all the steps. This is actually a nice one that I um, you know, like to use and I'll leave it in the description box, a link where you can get it on Amazon. And they need to be sharp and clean. And speaking of clean, what I typically do is whenever I'm using things to prune or to like cut parts of my flowers in my garden, fruits or veggies as the case may be, I like to give them a little cleaning with some rubbing alcohol. This is optional, you can use soap and, wa soap and water if you like. But this is just to make sure that you're not spreading disease from one plant to another. So you can see I did it for the pruners and I'm also doing the same thing for the knife as well in case I'll need to use it. So if you're looking in here, right, you can see the rhizomes that they're kind of close together right here. You can see one going off to the side in different directions. And this is, you know, they're competing for food, so it's not a good spot for them to, a good place for them to be. This one here is even worse. These are actually overlapping, almost like, you know, like a, you know, like a plaid pattern in a sense, one lapping over the other. That's not good for them at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is to make sure that we are watering them before we go in and divide them. So this is something that you wanna do. Don't go in, 
you know, and try to dig them out in summer when the ground is dry and hard. It's going to break them up and it's going to be, you know, very difficult for you. So that's the first thing to bear in mind and something to avoid. Then what you want to do is to go in and, you know, just take a look at the leaves and give them a trim. And you want to, you do want to leave some leaves on top of there. So don't take all the leaves off and just go in and start trimming them off. So that way you can actually see exactly what you're working with and you know the best way to approach it. So I'm just going in here and taking my time and just cutting them back. And you always want to make sure that you leave the little center part there where the leaves are because that's where they're going to be coming up from. And we do need to leave some of the leaves behind. Usually we do them in like a, a little bit of a fan shape because you're going to be needing them to produce foods when you just put them down. So here we are. Take a look now and see everything that we did as far as trimming them back. You can see how they are. That crisscross pattern, some of them very close together. So they really, really needed to be divided. And especially if the ground is a little bit compacted where you are, even more so, you know, they can be affected by leaf borers if there's a lot of mulch on them and things like that. So it's a good idea to divide them. And typically that's done every four to three to four years or so. So if you have a softer area, it's not too compacted, very lightly packed soil, you can just go in with your trowel and it should be easy enough for you to do. And you just take your time or if that's all you can manage, you can just still, you know, go in and do it either way. Just slowly ease it out, you know, use it to ease out the, um, the rhizomes that you're seeing there and then gently just lift them out as you see me doing right here. And you always want to inspect them to make sure that they're looking reasonably healthy. If they're not, then you don't want to discard them. So over here now my husband is going in with the spade and digging in because this area, it's a little bit um, compacted here and these have been divided. These are divided maybe about, I think, four years ago. So it's high time for us to do it again. And they've been so good to me. They still bloom so well, but you know, it's a good practice, you know, to go in and do them at that point, a point in time. So here you can see that he's going in and just lifting it out and you can see how everything is, you know, kind of bonded together. And we're gonna go ahead and break them apart. Just to show you here that this is what it looks like you can see the long roots extending out and now if you're looking and you see any of them looking like this they've been damaged by leaf borers or sometimes just a little bit of rot happening because maybe leaves fell on them like you're seeing here or possibly too much mulch on them you will want to go in and remove these because don't try to save these that would be a mistake because they're gonna infect the rest of the plants that are there so just go in and take them out and I'll show you right now exactly how I did it which kind of is pretty much the same way you would lift out any of the other um, rhizomes out from there as well. So just go in and gently ease them out. Don't disturb them too much. Because whatever is there, we don't want is spreading to the other ones. And just take your time and lift them out. And if a part gets broken back like you're seeing right here, just go in and, you know, gently ease that out as well. You can see that that one is also dried out. So one mistake to avoid is planting them like this where you don't have any leaves coming off the shoot in a sense coming off from there. You do need to see some leaves coming off. Maybe this one might give us some leaves towards the side that you're seeing those little light spots right there. But it's going to take a longer time to come up. So it's better not to use those, especially since we have so many of them. Just discard that. And then here now, you know, if your soil is not very, um, you know, if it's not good soil, you'll want to amend it a little bit with some um, garden soil. And if you have a little compost, you can add it on to it as well. They like partly acidic soil, so this is a reasonably good mix right here. And guys, just to say that, you know, if you like gardening and you like flowers, you know, half as much as I do, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell twice. So that way you'll never miss an upload. That also allows you to find my, my, like my playlist and my other videos that I've done in the past. So in this case, we did not go ahead and add any of that to our soil, no manure or anything, because it's, it's pretty good. Um, and we can always dress it a little bit more later on um, if we ever wanted to, but we're pretty um, secure with how it is. But I'm gonna go ahead right now and take this tip off right here. Um, it's a little bit long and also um, it looks a little brown, so I'm just gonna go in and take it out just in case there's anything going on with it. 
So of course I'm gonna get the knife and just go in and cut it out. And you typically you'd wanna cut it before you plant it in the soil. Um, but if you didn't, you can do it like I did at this point here. The main thing when you're doing this now is to make sure that the soil is covering those roots that are sticking out the smaller roots as much as you can because that's the critical part that's going to support your plant and absorb water and all of that. The rhizomes are more for storage more than anything else and those really don't, you should not plant them deep because that's, that's, that's definitely a mistake to avoid right there, you know, planting them deep like um, bulbs like daffodils and tulips and so on. Then of course you'll want to go in and water them like I'm doing here. You know, give them a nice good soak if it's going to rain, you know, you can always do them maybe a day before it rains so that helps you out a little bit there. And then the leaves that you took off, if they're, if they're in good, good shape, you know, no pests, no diseases, you can go ahead and put them in your compost pile. If you're seeing anything that looks like they're not healthy, then I would say just, you know, tie them up and put them in the trash. So let's say you were trying to, you know, plant them, you know, early enough before the first frost came in your area and you were a little bit late or you had a surprise, surprise um, cold, you know, snap coming through, you can just lightly dress them with a little bit of mulch and you'll be okay. Just remember to take the mulch off in the springtime because the mulch, if it's too much, is going to cause the root borer diseases to come on. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap now, things to bear in mind. So the first thing is to make sure that you are planting them at the right time, which typically would be August or September if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, which is basically mid to late summer or early fall. Try to get them in before, you know, four weeks before the first frost comes in. The next thing is to water them before you divide them because you wanna make sure that the soil is, you know, soft enough, especially since it's being done in the, you know, summertime, so that way your, you know, your, your rhizomes will stay as healthy and not pop too much. The next thing to bear in mind is to try to use clean tools when you can. Remove any damaged or diseased rhizomes. Don't take off too much of the leaves. You do need to have some left behind that's going to feed the plant but by photosynthesis until the cold season comes and they, you know, they dry all the way down. And again, you know, when you're planting those rhizomes, just make sure that they're not too deep in the soil because you don't want them to have root rot. And then, you know, a little bonus tip I'll say is just to make sure that, you know, you be patient. Sometimes in the very first year after you've divided them, you may get few, if any, blooms at all. But I almost guarantee you 100% that the following year after that, like two years after, you will have lots of beautiful blooms unless something really bad happened to them, you know, to cause them to not come up and be their usual self. So I hope that this was helpful to you. I do want to say thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you can keep track of all of my videos. You know, I upload every week. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And happy gardening. And I hope you'll have some wonderful iris blooms for the next season. Take care.